The Old Man and the Sea by Ernest Hemingway is a short story that seems simple enough, but there are many life lessons interwoven throughout. At the heart of the story is an old Cuban fisherman who never gives up. The old man lives a tough life of unending struggle with fate and chance. His life is hard, but he works hard, maintains his integrity and inner dignity, doesn't complain, doesn't make excuses, doesn't boast, and he never surrenders. These are all qualities that we need to be successful in life. Before we get into the lessons, let's do a quick summary. Santiago is an old and experienced fisherman who hasn't caught a fish in 84 days, but he doesn't give up. On the 85th day, he goes further out into the sea in a small boat and he hooks a giant marlin. He battles the majestic fish for three days and never gives in. After three days of unrelenting persistence, determination, and grit, he pulls the fish close to the boat and kills it with a harpoon. The fish is too big to fit in his boat, so he ties it to the side and heads home. On the way back, his marlin is picked apart by successive groups of sharks until the magnificent fish is eventually nothing but bones. It's such a short and simple story, yet it's chock full of complex concepts like failure versus success, man's relationship with nature, heroism, nobility of character, understanding and respecting nature, fate and chance, pride, and what it means to be a man. Lesson number one, never give up. And I quote, a man is not made for defeat. A man can be destroyed, but not defeated. This is the underlying theme of the book. Live your life to your fullest potential. Never give in, never surrender. Our lives might end. A man can be destroyed, but the impressions we have made will go on. Our legacy is what remains after we are destroyed. What is your legacy? Santiago had nothing but an old broken boat and an old broken body. Although he is old and doesn't have much to show materialistically, his eyes remain the same color as the sea and are cheerful and undefeated. His spirit cannot be defeated. He hasn't given up and continues to live his life his way. To him, a man's legacy comes from maintaining their integrity. He's gone out to sea 84 days in a row without a catch, but he keeps trying. He knows if he keeps trying, he will eventually succeed. And he does. Although the flesh was eaten by the sharks, he did catch the biggest fish anyone has seen. In life, you have to try your best no matter what comes your way. Obstacles will arise and they will challenge you, but they will also shape you and help you grow. And here's another quote from the book. Then the fish came alive with his death in him and rose high out of the water, showing all his great length and width and all his power and his beauty. The fish is like Santiago in a way. Right before the fish died, it came alive for one final surge, just like the old man is at the end of his life and is giving one final surge at life. He returns without his reward, the fish, but he does return with his reputation revitalized. According to Hemingway, man was most alive when facing death. How someone reacts to a situation says a lot about their character. It's in these struggles where individuals achieve glory. The old man says, I am too old to club sharks to death, but I will try as long as I have the oars and the short club and the tiller. I'll fight them until I die. As Santiago heads home with the marlin, he realizes sharks will come to pick at the fish. At first he thinks he's too old to defend the prize, but when they come, he puts up a very good fight, even killing a few of the sharks. You're never too old to put up a good fight. That brings us to lesson number two. Success is how you define it. Hemingway makes us think about what success really means in this book. Is success attaining a certain status level or having a lot of money? Santiago was at the lowest end of the social ladder, had little money, but lived by a different philosophy of what success means. Success to him meant living by his values. He preferred to live by qualities such as integrity and hard work. He didn't wait for success to come to him. He tried to seek it out. He battles a huge fish survives by pure grit and determination, killed a couple sharks in defending his catch, but eventually failed. Although he failed at being a fisherman that day, in a way, he succeeded at being a noble man. Isn't that more important than catching a fish? It's the way you react in difficult circumstances that show your true character. Santiago recognizes his failures and acknowledges them. He knew he went too far out into the gulf, and he fought the sharks off even though he knew it was useless. He's willing to admit when he makes mistakes. It takes a strong person to be able to admit your mistakes. We all make mistakes, 
but we are not all willing to say so. Lesson number three is to be grateful for what you already have. And I quote, now is no time to think of what you do not have. Think of what you can do with what there is. Be grateful for what you have and use what you have to the best of your ability. Santiago's world is extremely tough. They survive day to day on what they can catch in the sea. He has little food and his friend Manolin sometimes brings him sustenance. And with what little he has, he is still grateful. Now most of us are much, much more fortunate than that. Lesson four is to be your own man and stop caring what others think or say. As Santiago spits blood into the ocean after a long battle with the sharks, he says, Eat that, Galonos, and make a dream you've killed a man. In the end, the marlin is reduced to bones, but although his prize is gone and ruined, Santiago is not defeated. He never stopped fighting. The marlin was a beautiful piece of art, and the sharks were its critics. Hemingway may have been trying to tell us something here. He received a lot of criticism around his books, especially across the river and into the trees in 1950, when he was 51 years old. He wrote Old Man in the Sea after that. So key point here is, in life you will achieve things and make works of art, but there will always be critics out there to tear it down. Don't let that stop you. Do what's in your heart and don't worry about what people think about it. If they tear it down, they either are envious or they don't understand it. And another great quote, If the others heard me talking out loud, they would think that I am crazy. But since I am not, I do not care. Again, Santiago really doesn't give a crap about what anyone thinks. I think that's something that comes naturally with age. For the men out there, we've all been in the men's locker room, and it's plain to see that old guys don't really care what you're thinking about them. I mean, they're walking around the locker room naked. So don't let it take until you're 70 years old to have that mentality. Stop caring right now. The younger fishermen laugh at Santiago, and the older ones look at him and feel sad, but he does not mind. And another good quote, he knew he had attained humility, and he knew it was not disgraceful and that it carried no loss of true pride. What makes a hero? Santiago is undefeated, undeterred, and unaffected by the pity or contempt of others. To me, that is more courageous and admirable than someone with money who had to lose their integrity along the way. Don't get me wrong, money is an evil and many people have both wealth and integrity. Okay, moving on, lesson five. Work hard, persist, and do not depend on luck. Santiago said, to hell with luck. I'll bring the luck with me. And he also said, every day is a new day. It is better to be lucky, but I would rather be exact. Then when luck comes, you are ready. Santiago doesn't rely on luck. He defies luck by working hard and being ready for when opportunities come. Make your own luck. After 84 days without a fish, he continued to work hard and keep trying. He's been unfortunate lately, but he knows if he keeps persisting, his hard work will pay off. Anyone can have luck, of course, but not everyone can have determination, skill, and perseverance. Santiago knows this and therefore believes in his ability rather than chance. He doesn't take shortcuts. He just works hard. Lesson six, do not complain. Santiago said, pain means nothing to a man. And another good quote from the book, he was shivering with the morning cold, but he knew he would shiver himself warm and that soon he would be rowing. Santiago endures pain and hardship, but he presses on. Even when cold, hungry, thirsty, and facing death, he simply did what needed to be done. He didn't complain. He didn't pity himself. He just took action. At one point, his hand was cut badly from the fishing line, but that didn't stop him, and it didn't cause him to whine. He just pressed on. We could use a lot more of that in today's world. Lesson seven, be humble. Manolin, and I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but the little boy stated, who is the greatest manager, really, Luke or Mike Gonzalez? I think they are equal, and the best fisherman is you. The old man says, no, I know others better. Kevad, the boy says, there are many good fishermen and some great ones, but there is only you. The old man says, thank you. You make me happy. I hope no fish will come along so great that he will prove us wrong. Now let your actions speak for you. When you brag, you're just showing your insecurities. So be humble. Lesson eight is to set an example for the youth. Santiago is kind of a sage to the boy, Manolin. He shares his experiences and knowledge with the young boy. He teaches him qualities a man should possess, and he respects the boy. 
you should respect everyone in life, whether they're above you, below you, or your peer. Lesson nine is to be determined in what you aim to do. And I quote, I may not be as strong as I think, but I know many tricks and I have resolution. Santiago realizes he may not be as strong as he thinks, and he may not be the best fisherman, but he has determination on his side, and that is why he will win. You don't have to be the best at something. You just have to keep at it unremittingly. Lesson 10, there is only one you. There are many good fishermen and some great ones, but there is only one you. So with that said, don't compare yourself to anyone else, ever. You are unique. Do what makes you happy. Fulfill your purpose and don't worry about others' expectations, opinions, and so on. You're here for a purpose, so find it. When you do find it, work hard and don't let anyone hold you back. And the last lesson is to understand and respect nature. And I quote, The fish is my friend too. I have never seen or heard of such a fish, but I must kill him. I'm glad we do not have to try and kill the stars. Imagine if each day a man must try to kill the moon, he thought. In this quote, he's contemplating his place in the world and the nature of everything else in the universe. He has some inner conflicts about killing such a strange and beautiful creature, but he has to in order to survive. He respects the marlin and relates to the fish in a way. He doesn't quite understand why things are the way they are, but he understands that it's just a natural order of the world. Santiago states that it doesn't matter whom kills whom, but he will not stop until one of them is dead. He reflects on his actions towards nature and sees the constructive and destructive aspects of it. We should all take time to reflect on the nature of the universe and our place in it. We should also always respect nature because we are a part of it. He also shows respect and compassion for his enemy, which is the fish, when he states, Fish, I love and respect you. We should all take the time to reflect on nature and our own nature. That wraps it up for Old Man in the Sea. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give a like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.